Hey, welcome everybody to your 50th Python tutorial. First off, I wanted to say congrats for sticking through it all this way. Hopefully by now you're starting to piece together things and see that we can start making really cool complex apps. We're going to go through the fifth review page, which you can find up on my GitHub at Caleb Curry slash Python. And we're gonna copy this and just go through it line by line. Shouldn't be too complicated. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So I'll paste that in here and we'll just clear out the terminal, just keep it fresh. And let's just start at the top here. So any complex program is made possible thanks to control flow statements. Control flow is just a fancy word to include if statements and loops. A foundational concept to doing this is logic, which deals with Boolean values, either true or false. And true is a keyword, so you don't use quotes or anything like that. And we're gonna run this and see what the output is. So we'll scroll up to the top. Starts with true right there. Now operators can return true or false. So here are some examples, comparison operators, five is greater than three. Well, heck yeah, that's true. Age being 21, is it greater than or equal to 21? Yes, it is. You can even do this with strings. So here we have two strings, me and you. Are we equal? And no, it's false. I mean, obviously I'm way above you. <laughs> I'm just playing. Wow, savage. All right, what else? We have two grades lists and these are different and you can even check to see if they have the same grades. Now what we do is we change your grades to match mine and now we run it and it's true. So that's what these two outputs are right here. Now in some languages, this is just a call out, is that equals equals will compare by memory address to see if they are the same object. This is done in Python using is. So are grades the same object? And then it says my grades is your grades and it's false. Even though they have the same values, 100, 100, 100, it doesn't matter, they're not the same object, which is why we get false here. If we were to assign one list to the other, so we say my grades is equal to your grades, they are now pointing to the same object in memory, and in that situation, our grades the same object, we get true. So it's basically an alias. My grades and your grades are two names we can use to refer to the same exact thing. What else here? You can do order testing for strings. Does A come before B? You can do ABC is less than BCD, and it's true. So this is considered less than B. So it could be read as ABC coming before BCD in the alphabet. First letter decides that yes, ABC comes first. You can also use the not operator to negate anything. So A not being equal to B, that is true. And notice here we used an exclamation mark equals. This is actually different than what I showed you earlier. Alternatively, you could say not. Next up, we got if statements. So this is gonna ask for our name and our age. If it's Caleb, it's gonna say, hey Caleb. Otherwise, it's not gonna do anything. And that indent there is really important. We're gonna use four spaces for that. And let's go ahead and put our name in here, Caleb. And notice this is dynamic. You get to choose what the input is and the application branches. What's my age? Uh, I don't know. Let's go with 150. All right, we get a bunch of outputs, so let's scroll up here. We just typed in 150. It says, hey Caleb because my name is Caleb, so that's where that comes from. If age is greater than 100, wow. Now the thing here is this next statement here is not indented, so it's gonna execute every time. It says you are so old. However, even if I put in age 40, it's still going to execute that. So you gotta make sure you remember to indent. It should look like this with both of them indented to the same level. That's why we get this output again, because it runs and evaluates to true. Now what else? If age is greater than 100, which it is, it says you're old, which is that output right there. This is an if, elif statement with an else at the bottom. And then lastly, we can use Boolean variables inside of our logic. Caleb is cool is false. If Caleb is cool is true, then you're willing to be friends with me. Otherwise, you say ooh. So yeah, story of my childhood. Now this equals equals operator will check equality. However, since Caleb is cool is a Boolean already, we can bypass that and just say if Caleb is cool, which also makes more sense if we're reading it like English. Last up, we got logical operators to make complex conditionals. 
So we got and, or, and not. So here's an example, we have thunder is false, lightning is true. If lightning or thunder, don't go swimming. Now I know there's some relationship between lightning and thunder, like one's visible and one's sound. However, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes you get one without the other. So if you see or hear either one, you don't go swimming. With and, here's another example. If a car is nice and it's on sale, you buy it. But if it's only nice, but it's not on sale, you don't buy it. There's always nice cars out there. And just because a car is on sale doesn't mean you should buy it. You wanna make sure you get a nice car and a car that's on sale. So because one's true, one's false, it does not execute. We could also use the not operator. So if temp outside is 50 and the pool heated is false. So if it's less than 60, which it is, and it's not heated, then you don't go swimming, which is why it says don't go swimming. If it was heated, then it'd be fine, right? Who cares what the temperature is if you have a heated pool? Then I got some extra notes here you can read if you're interested. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the last section on control flow. Next, we're gonna continue our control flow discussion by talking about loops. So stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you there.